Well, I'm just uh, driving here on the Wawash Cash Lake Road, uh, headed to the put in at uh, the marina here, and uh, I'm going to be paddling out to meet up with Jim. He just finished paddling the upper section with um, a couple guys, uh, Brad Jennings, and uh, uh, explore the back country and. Um, uh, the other guy from Northern Scavenger, I can't remember his name. But, I just pulled up, and uh, I'm going to start uh, loading the boat, and hopefully it's uh, it's nice out. I hear the bugs are absolutely horrible, but the weather is nice right now, so you can't win everything, right? Anyway, here we are. Well, I'm just here at Wawash Kesh Lake. I'm putting my boat in and I'm gonna be paddling the lower section of the Magnetowan River from Wawash Kesh to Georgian Bay to Brit. And uh, looking forward to it. Apparently the water levels have come up quite a bit, which is a little concerning. Um, you know, might be in a couple portages. It's actually my first time doing any considerable soloing. Uh, you know, I've paddled solo here and there, but nothing major, uh, mostly stern and then some bow paddling and tandem combinations. So jumping right into it. I'm gonna be meeting up with my brother, uh, Jim, who's camped out on the lake. He paddled the upper section. Luckily, I was able to make it out to paddle the lower section, which is, uh, in my opinion, a prettier stretch of river. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty good. Gonna be three days, finishing Wednesday if everything goes as planned. And we got a beautiful day. I heard the bugs were terrible, but uh, right now they're not so bad. So uh, doing all right. Um, one complaint is, is I'm dumping sweat. Anyway, um, be good to just get out on the water here and uh, get rolling. A lot of flat water on this trip, so I'm actually going to bring my double blade just to speed through and save a little bit of time for uh, scouting rapids and fishing and what have you. Kind of, we'll see how it goes. I'm not used to doing that, but uh, we'll give it a run. It is a, a little extra gear to carry, but it's not like it's heavy. It is uh, carbon fiber, so I don't think I'll regret it. Well, I'm off and uh, I'm on the water later than I would have hoped. Um, just a few uh, hang ups for sure. Um, those always happen, I suppose, but a little bit, little bit nerve wracking getting on the water. It's uh, 20 to one. I was hoping to be at Jim's campsite 
by late at noon. So, assuming I was 20 minutes away, I'd still be, be late, but I don't know. Um, it is what it is. I had some issues with this canoe that I had to uh, take care of. And as I mentioned, <laughs> I don't have a ton of experience soloing. I mean, I've done tons of whitewater canoeing in remote areas. And um, it's either mostly been as a stern paddler, but also as a bow paddler. But not a lot of solo stuff other than just playing around a little bit here and there. So this is a pretty uh, substantial river to take on as a first solo. Uh, but it should be all right. You know, it can always portage if uh, it's a little sketchy. Just checking the map here. I should be at gym probably in about 30 minutes or so. Well, it is day three of my Magnetowan adventure from uh, paddling from my house to Georgian Bay and no sign of Ted. Um, I'm concerned um, that uh, he might not be able to find me or something. I mean, this lake is pretty challenging. Before I left, I gave him a, a general idea about where I'd be camped, but uh, this lake has a lot of islands and bays and it's tough to navigate. Um, so yeah, no, no sign of him yet. Um, I've been obviously sleeping in and just sitting around taking a few casts and that kind of stuff. Um, and no, uh, uh, and it's getting quite late, so I'm starting to get a little worried. I'm sure he'll be here. I'm just maybe he ran into some stuff. The canoe needed a small repair to it and things like that. So we'll see. But anyways, I guess I'm just going to get ready for when he does get here, so we don't get too far behind on the day. So I'm just going to kind of break camp and uh, pack up the boat, and that way when Ted gets here, we'll be able to go. Whatever do we do with the buckaroo? Buckaroo's the cutest dog who knew. He is up late, way past his curfew. It's time to go to bed, just like Scooby Dooby Doo. Buckaroo, buckaroo. Oh, buckaroo, buckaroo, buckaroo we the through. So in the voyageur days, when someone would sleep in, the other voyageurs would drop the tent on him. Of course, if they had a tent, a lot of the times they just slept under a canvas. Um, or the chief factor would have a nice little tent and you know the boss that would travel with them and if even if he slept in they would drop the tent on him um, so I'm carrying on in that tradition with my husky Malamute mix but it's still not getting him out of the tent Buck what's this Get up, Buck. It's pushing 11. When the bugs are bad, dogs will go and uh, lie under like low lying branches at the bottom of the trees or even under juniper bushes and tuck themselves away. Well, thank you for joining us, Buck. Good boy. And I've heard a couple fish jump. And I've seen one jump over there this morning, but. Um, this lake's usually pretty good. Uh, the lower river, Magnanodon, is definitely better than the upper. But uh, last time through here, I caught a big pike. And my brother caught a. Uh, a pickerel right off the dock. Oh, it's a bass. 
Bass season's not open, so I gotta release this quickly. It's a nice one though. Lots of pep in that guy. Woo! Oh man, that's chilly. See, my first thoughts in the boat are, you know, it's solid, it's stable, but it's, um... Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good, I'm just uh, paddling out of the uh, the bay right now. So... I'm absolutely deceiving, like my topo shows where I, where I showed you I was going to be with the pen and the photo. It shows out as like a point connected to the island, but it's actually not. So. Yeah, you know, I, I that's all right. The, uh, the topo on uh, that I used to print, I just took screenshots off my Canada topo and it shows it nice. not as a point. So I think maybe it's yeah. more accurate. Yeah, but, yeah. It does. It shows it as kind of like a little rocky outcrop. Yeah. So what do you think your ETA is? Probably like a half hour or something. How's the boat? This boat is just so huge. What size are you? You have the same. You're soloing the same boat, pretty much, or what? No, I'm soloing a 15 foot cross back here, so it's not quite as maneuverable as that, but it's got a foot and a half longer, right? Uh huh. Yeah, it just feels huge. Like, I just feel like I might be able to turn back and forth, but the current's just going to whip me whatever it wants. Yeah, I wasn't so sure. And once I started paddling and I'm like, this thing's heavy, you know? Like, I feel like it's just going to, like, the water's just going to whip me wherever it wants. Even though it's bigger, it's probably more maneuverable than the prospector. It definitely turns pretty responsively. It's definitely pretty stable. It's just... Mm getting it from A to B. Ted is soloing a Novacraft Moisey 16.6. Uh, that's a tandem whitewater boat. Like my Prospector P15 could also even be paddled tandem. Um, but the 16.6 uh, the is definitely a two person boat. So it's gonna be challenging with all this high volume boiling water to just keep it going straight a boat that long um, and keep it from uh, spinning 180. So I just spoke to Jim. Uh, we get cell reception here, which is uh, new. Last time I was here, uh, last few times, I don't think we have reception. And I know there's going to be sections of the river where we don't get reception, so uh, kind of convenient, but would have been pretty easy to find him anyway. But um, we were just talking about that it's, you know, I'm just a little nervous paddling this uh, this boat. It's pretty big. It's a 16 and a half feet. It's a bit of a tub to be soloing. Feels pretty maneuverable, but you know, in powerful currents, it's, uh, I feel like it's gonna be hard, especially since I haven't done a lot of soloing at all. So that's kind of a concern. And then the other concern is the water level's actually really high. Um, for this time of year, it's uh, very high. Um, you know, it, I, on June 10th, it was, uh, the river was running at, uh, I think 15 CMS less than it is today, because we got a lot of rain. It's the 17th today. So, um, you know, it's kind of concerning to, for me too, being my first, uh, you know, solo trip of uh, any magnitude. But that's all right. I'll just play it by ear and, Hopefully get a few practice rapids in first uh, after the dam. There's one that isn't too bad generally. Uh, from my memory serves me correctly. It's not that bad. We'll see how it is in this water level, but you know, it'll give me a little bit of practice and and uh, we'll take it from there. And if I need to portage, we'll, I'll have to portage, so.
So, not a uh, not a bad morning and early afternoon. It's pushing on to one, but uh, no Ted yet. I'm thinking that he's gonna pop his head around the corner any minute. Well, I am pretty much just arriving at Jim's campsite here. Hey, Ted! He's yelling out to me. How's it going? Good! Buckaroo sees you. Is that Ted? Oh, it's Buck. Hi, Buck. I forgot, Jim. I wasn't sure. I figured Jim didn't bring the buckaroo. Hi, Buck. Yay, yeah, boy. Good. Good boy. Come say hi, Buck. Come say hi. Good boy. Good boy. Hi, Buck. Maybe we should just, you know, camp on this lake, fish, just relax. <laughs> I know, right? He's here! Yeah! And Buck heard Ted's voice and immediately knew it was Ted and went out and greeted him kind of a big thing to just chew off and whip down a very high class river out of the gate in a 16 and a half foot boat by yourself a tandem boat so we'll see it might be just absolute carnage I have no idea what to expect I guess we'll find out do you think uh, would you recommend your first solo trip on an advanced level river in high water when uh, um, in, a, in a boat that's meant for tandem yeah that's a little concerning so I wouldn't uh, recommend that no no I wouldn't it's just so scary you're just like you know likely to drown oh. yeah likely to drown <laughs> do you want to fill this up for me my chance of drowning fill this know, up for me so hard sorry you brought a one and a half liter again you idiot I don't care just what fill it idiot. up for me if you could I'm parched Ted's getting a spray deck on. Some flat water, dam, nice class two, raging rapid in a massive canyon, followed by a raging rapid, and then another intense class three. I just, uh, I'm starting to feel kind of vulnerable out there, so. 
sound like a gigantic baby. Jim says I sound like a gigantic baby, but I don't know. It's hard. It's hard when you just kind of know that probably it's just going to be like a yard sale of carnage, and there's just no way around it. <laughs> Solo but not alone trip, Ted. That's what I'm going to call this. Solo but not alone. Angle. I just We're not uh, be in the boat arguing with each other that everyone enjoys so much. We're coming to the first obstacle of the day, and it's the Wawash Cache Lake Dam. And uh, I'm pretty nervous, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I kind of a little bit of nervousness is is good, right? You can see the water splashing up. So we've just got to uh, the Wawash Cache Dam and uh, it definitely is a lot higher than last time I was here which kind of sucks. Um, it's, uh, it's a bit more of a washout, you know, there's a, it's like less of a drop, an incline but definitely means the river volume is a lot higher and it's definitely unrunnable this time. Unfortunately, we can tell the water is already way higher than the last time we were here. But sometimes, with uh, big drops and ledges, it actually kind of flattens them out and makes them longer, but overall not as challenging. So, I'm, I still might be able to run this, I don't know, because the drop might not be as big. Not good. I'm out. So I'm sure people could run it. Uh, there is a tongue in the same spot there's always been, but it's a lot more of a hole. There's a lot less pushing out. And after it is quite a boiling, frothing keeper um, that uh, that basically uh, just makes it too dangerous. Portage. That's pretty disappointing because uh, Ted and I have run this, the two of us. I've soloed it. Um, so yeah, a little disappointing because we're worried that this high water is going to mean we can't run anything, which means we're going to be portaging all day today, which sucks.
Yeah, they're squirrely for sure. Felt pretty good uh, running that section there. Definitely a little easier hitting the big haystack solo. Um, took in absolutely no water, uh, even if I had a spray deck or not. So uh, that's promising. Uh, this rapid here actually looks like it's gonna be maybe a little easier than it often is because uh, it's a little washed out. Uh, but there's a really extreme glare from the sun hitting it right now. It's actually making it really hard to see uh, any rocks. It's like quite blinding, almost like when you're driving and the sun is setting in your eyes or rising in your eyes. Uh, so that adds a little element of uh, danger, you know, and just the rapid doesn't need to be huge to pin, right? So um, we're definitely behind schedule. We're trying to make it uh, another um, five kilometers, but we have several rapids and what's likely a portage and all kinds of stuff in front of us. So we're going to try and see how far we can get because uh, it's even though the spot is beautiful here, there's a beautiful island campsite here. It just, you know, really we should put some more distance in. I should have, but my thing's up to- I wasn't thinking, I went a little too fast. Anyway, it was fun. Dude, judging by how raging that is. I wonder if it's possible if canal rapid could get washed out. Like that whole- Like just... easier, you mean? Yeah. Like Maybe. the top. Maybe. Let's go have a look at it. Maybe we carry our bag. I can't grab my GoPro there. Hi! How fun was that, eh? What's going on down there? It looks sketchy. Yeah, it looks super aerated, doesn't it? This actually doesn't look nearly as bad as I thought, though. There's no, no ripping back eddy this way. And you could just hit that hole. Well, oh, I, that I wouldn't... Massive, though. Yeah. We're just scouting a rapid and we're about 100 feet up. So one of the things that, <laughs> that happens is, is that everything looks way smaller from 100 feet up. So it looks pretty big from here. So from down there, it's probably really big. Uh, the hole that often we run into is, is a little less predominant and it's more of just a tongue and a wave, but, but uh, there still is a powerful eddy and a powerful hole. And the rest of the rapid looks very irregular and aerated. So really hard to, to scout from a hundred feet up too. Super impressive canyon this is, hundred meter cliffs on either side absolutely beautiful but definitely uh, something you want to be a little concerned about when you're paddling the river in a canoe Well, I just scouted the canyon and uh, it actually looks runnable. I'm surprised, but it's about a kilometer long. Uh, and the, probably the sketchy spot is right at the top. So if you dump, you take a long swim, I've run this once, uh, with Jim before, successfully, all the way down. Uh, and another time with a buddy, we tumped at the top, made it over to the eddy, and then 
bailed and ran the rest. Uh, so I do uh, feel pretty good in the solo boat and uh, I think I could run it but it's just a little I think it's a little much out of the gate um, I think it'd be fine but we're pretty remote here and last time it looked a lot easier from a hundred feet up <laughs> than it actually is so I think it's it's hard to say but it's I think I should uh, portage at least half of it um, as much as that hurts I do feel like I could do it but that's my issue with with all these things is that I feel like they're doable and then get myself into trouble <laughs> anyway uh, I th I've just decided I'm going to portage at least the beginning I'll carry past this uh, kind of really irregular aerated huge uh, section with boils and holes and all of that and uh, I'll decide whether I want to run the bottom section probably will do that just um, part of the reason of getting a late start in the day that's annoying is this exact reason is that I hate feeling like you know you got to rush something so either you rush something and run something without scouting it well or in this case really the fastest thing to do to get to camp would have been just you know pull over portage we already been done trip one trip I'd be back for my second trip and uh, that'd be that but that's not really what we came here to do so it's just annoying when it's late in the day and you feel rushed anyway I've made a decision and that's what I'm gonna roll with remember why me and Ted try to run everything <laughs> or line it. Oh, this is miserable. The entire lining bag that has all this rope, I've been dragging it, and that's what keeps pulling me backwards. It's all spooled out, dragging back 50 yards. What a bitch. Anyways, yeah, so a pretty gnarly big water class three coming up. Hopefully we don't dump. Yeah, Ted, left. Left and then right, but not too far left. Woo!
Throwing the boat all over the place. The nose is so light. The waves are pretty irregular and I have so little weight in the front of my canoe and being a six, 16 and a half foot canoe, it really tosses the nose around there. But I was able to regain control because the standing waves were coming from this way, this way, this way. Um, but I hit my line fine, so it was all right. Pretty fun rapid and uh, be interesting. So it's getting pretty late in the day. It's after eight, 8.15. Uh, probably gets dark at about 9.30, like actually dark, but the sun is set. And we wanna go about four more K to a nice campsite that would put us in good starting position for tomorrow. Uh, but there's also a nice campsite here. And I guess, well, it's not the nicest. The other one's much nicer, but it's not bad. Uh, there's a an outhouse here and obviously people get ATVs in here pretty buggy pretty crappy but um, I think we're probably gonna push on but uh, yeah fun rapid you know soloing uh, definitely I uh, definitely it's a lot easier in some ways that's for sure I mean you don't take in any water hitting those big waves you'd be pretty soupy tandem for that so pretty sweet fun run Fun times. It's passing the beautiful falls over there. It's actually really nice to be paddling right now at this time. I'm getting a camp late, but out on the water still. It's beautiful, the air smells really nice. There's a little hatch of some sort of moths going on.
that fucking stove didn't work, remember? <laughs> Rolling into camp at 9.30, eh? Third time we camped here. What a incredibly beautiful evening. Um, just such a nice campsite, nice reward to get here after, um, you know, being on the river and piling all those rapids and being soaked and getting a fire going. And all you can hear is the peepers and some birds chirping and the fire crackling. So it doesn't really get any better than this. We've got the whole place to ourselves, the whole lake to ourselves. Just amazing. It's part of one of the reasons why doing these kinds of trips is really rewarding is because you get into these spots that you get all to yourself. Tonight for dinner, I'm doing uh, nothing too fancy, but it sounds good. These little freeze-dried meals, freeze meals are great because uh, they're super light and if you're in a pinch, you can just grab them. All you have to do is add boiling water to them, stir them up. So this is Thai style peanut curry and rice with beef and vegetables. It's 540 calories per half package, so that's a pretty good amount. I'm getting uh, 1,080 calories in this meal, so pretty good. It says it's two servings, but honestly, it's not. None of them are. Um, maybe for some people, if you have something else to go with it, but not for me. Gross. There, that's what I'm gonna have with it, a mosquito. Anyway, um, time to get pouring water in the old package. 
all you have to do is boil water, pour it in here, seal it up, stir it up, and then eat it out of here. So it doesn't really get any easier than that. I'm kind of a lazy cooker, so what's your dinner, perfect Ted? for me. What happens if you put too much? Is it the end of the world? No, if you put too much, it just ends up being soupy and it just doesn't taste as good. I feel like that was perfect. looks pretty good and it's going to absorb all the water. It's pretty soupy right now, but you seal it up. Now, it can take the boiled water because it's aluminum inside. Or, uh, you know, like aluminum foil. And it says uh, seal and let sit for 15 to 20 minutes. It's a long time. Anyway, so that's all you got to do. I just want you Easiest to meal of all time. Somebody like me. 15, 20 I'm minutes. Pour some in mine, Sonny. And uh, then you add this peanut butter. I get two things of peanut butter I mix in. That's probably why this one has the uh, larger amount of calories. Plus your Leatherman? Yeah. We always bring these, the Leathermans with us or uh, Gerber or Multi-Tool. Um, they're excellent pot grippers. Rather have it too stiff than too weak, you know? Yeah. Super runnable and fun. Yeah. But we do have to do the one portage, remember, where we... Yeah. The viewers did, or the... Well, yeah, like a lot of the comments. They're sort of like, this is like, this is not fun. Yes, you know? Yeah. Right. We bring one of these presses, which is definitely a luxury. Sometimes we just do cowboy coffee, but sometimes we bring this. But it doubles as a mug, so it's pretty good. We just bring one mug and one this. And so it's kind of not really that much extra if you were going to bring mugs anyway or cups. So double whammy. Whoopsh, whoopsh. <sighs> really strong. Lick the plates. And Buck actually washes our plates. By Three Sny is that beautiful site. It's like an ATV site though. Right. But it's beautiful. Yeah. Why don't we stay there? Yeah, why don't we stay there? Uh, all being, you know, like pretty easy. Yeah. They might be like, they might be a little harder now, but probably. But like short portages too, right? What do you mean? Like if we have to portage them, they're all short. Yeah. There is a portage though, tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Give me this uh, Wally driver back here. Yeah, I'll pull mine off. No, switch to a jig head.
I'm regretting and saying that I think I've elected to portage it. I've run it twice before, and um, but the water was a little bit lower. There's a narrow way to get through, and if you miss it, it's very dangerous. So I decided because, you know, uh, I don't have as much practice as I'd like in that I'm gonna sit this one out, portage, and as I get more comfortable, I'll start hitting stuff like this. Like I said, I've ran it twice before, but this time the water's a little higher. It's a little sketchier and I'm soloing, so. I think Jim's gonna go for it still though. It's just, uh, just a real handful of different currents and boils, and then of course huge waves, and also a hole that if you fell into, you might die. Here we go, time to freaking run this uh, crazy rapid and hopefully defy death. not have gone better. Nailed it. The top kind of uh, rooster tail I hit pushed me right over top of a boiling pillow pretty much and I just eddied out right and like didn't even take in any water like wow amazing. So pretty treacherous uh, portage there. Not only is there a cliff, but it's also riddled with poison ivy. So pretty sure I stepped in some, but hopefully it's uh, it was quick and it'll wash off. Approaching three Sny Rapids, which is actually uh, a mandatory waterfall, oh, mandatory portage. Oh, I got a fish! I think it's just a small little bass. Unfortunately, can't keep it. for a walleye or a pike.
Bentley, baby. I mean, it's pretty little, but one or two more like that, we got a meal. So I'm gonna put it on a stringer, and if I catch nothing else, maybe I'll let them go, but awesome. Yeah! Wally! Well, it's pretty small, but Ted got a little one and that's going to be some good eating, so heck yeah! Look at that beauty! Like a blood feud with Terry's dad over there. Oh, you don't want to go to the tattoo? I'll let him out. Fuck. I'll help the car family, I guess. Pick her
That's what I'm talking about right there. Nice. There. Yeah. Seems to be all the size that's biting. Nailed it. Al Dante. Looks cool though. I feel like you kind of have to segue to it. Mm -hmm. You know, while you're doing it. Dude, they didn't use like any of it. Like, so? Weird. Yeah. Eating dinner in night vision. Switch into night vision, you want military style. with Alfredo sauce and fresh and fried pickerel fillets just off from the river. Small, probably could eat about 12 times as much, can you say? It just really adds something really special to this dinner. Mm. So nice. Buck helps clean the dishes. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Well, um, great end of the night. It's got a couple of pickerel or walleye, whatever you call them. Some people pickerel, some people walleye. And they were amazing. Jim cooked them up well. I cooked up some pasta, Alfredo. Came out really nice. Just hit the spot. So good. We're just camped at this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous spot. Called Three Snipe. It's got three falls, three waterfalls coming down like fingers. Absolutely beautiful. Um, kind of had a leisurely day today because it was either we pushed on and had a real push day or we had a bit of a leisurely day and camped here. It's not really good camping in between, so I'm glad we stayed here. At least now I am. We'll see about that tomorrow. But um, it's just absolutely beautiful moment. You know, I'm really happy to be out here. And uh, definitely enjoy doing this. It's hard work, but puts you on these amazing places and pretty special moment. Seeing a few fireflies start to come out now. Good night. Go to bed now. Good morning. It's about six o'clock, and uh, 
I've managed to get out of the tent. A lot to do today, a lot of huge rapids. You get water on, get some coffee going, get some oatmeal going, get going. To do day! Fuck! Time to get up! Come on! Good boy! Here's coffees. Ted checked the forecast before he came out and met me, and it showed some rain today. Um, it looks like we might get some, it's overcast, but it's like no wind and a little humid and very buggy weather this morning. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, uh, we didn't get up ultra early, but we were out of the tent by six. And uh, basically we have a very, very, very full day with like nine rapids to run. Go on, go on back, go on. Good boy. Yeah, I think we lined it last time, but like, I just feel like this is gonna be faster. Yeah. Oh my god, I've inhaled so many freaking mosquitoes today, it's out of control. I've never found a beer in the woods in my entire life, a full one anyway. Well, walking up to scout this run, I find a beer! Oh, crazy. Uh, and it's cold too. Anyways, we're just running train trestle rapid here. Class 3, uh, Ted's gone back to jump in the boat. I'm going to film him and then I'm going to run it and Ted's going to film me. It looks pretty big! Okay, here we go.
too far left? Yeah, the top wave, I hit it too far left, so it kind of pushed me right. And then I hit the other waves and like got a little like off balance because they were regular and boiling. And then I went to eddy out, but it was all boiled, so I just started paddling forward and just playing around a bit and actually kind of surfed one of those waves backwards for a bit. How was that run? Oh, it was pretty fun, you know? Yeah. Pretty yeah. It looked like your front was up high though, yeah, dude. Yeah, that wave's pretty big. Yeah, right it's big, there. dude. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and then there's a bit of a pull after that pushed me a bit right, but kind of just went down the middle of the wave train. You could get over to the eddy sooner, but it's actually from here you can't tell, but it's just so much of an eddy, it just boils until you get further yeah. down. Put it in there. Gotta try putting it in there. <laughs> the bugs are really, really bad right now. And of course, you're hauling a canoe and a bag and all that stuff so you can't swat them. It's it's torture. It's a form of torture for sure. <clears throat> ah, that hurts. Oh, just inhale the bug. It's the worst. You're sucking wind and then you suck one down in your freaking windpipe. Uh, so I am dumping sweat, getting absolutely hammered by bugs here. Um, and uh, I elected to just keep my dry suit on because it's such a war taking it on and off. And the shirt I have underneath the bugs just bite through everywhere. But I'm starting to regret that because I'm overheating and I'm sweating a lot more and I'm thirsty and I don't know if I have any water that's treated ready to go. Um, so yeah kind of sucks we're almost at the end of this but this is the sketchiest section of river um, and we also have to manage buck and make sure that he is safe um, you know it's both sections uh, section we've run before when buck was along uh, he ran along shore but the water levels this year of course are higher so we don't even know if we're gonna be able to run it um, but you know we need to get to the other side of the river to run a little section right above this huge drop which makes it dangerous uh you know we got to make sure we don't dump there and also you know that's not the side of the river the portage is on so um getting back over if you had to isn't isn't an easy feat there's no takeout that's safe so uh, pretty intense, but uh, hopefully we're through this soon and uh, hopefully it's uh, fun and runnable <clears throat> oh. Well, it's starting to rain Which uh, makes things definitely more miserable the bugs really like this weather and uh, we don't want the water to come up at all. But of course, rain means it will. So hopefully it's short lived, but kind of looks like it might go for a while.
pushing right pretty hard, eh? The hole. Yeah, it might push you. It might push you right and you dodge this. I might dump in there. I don't think so. I didn't. I didn't realize that side current there coming from the river right. Yeah. So like I thought it was just pushing this way. So if you come down straight, yeah. it's gonna turn you to the left, and then then this thing's gonna push your bow right. This might just push your bow right, and that's it. No, but like you see, let's say you're coming straight out the, yeah. the middle of the hole. Yeah. So, I am about to run what is probably the craziest and longest rapid I've ever won. It's the last drop of triple play in high water here. Rain we got earlier this morning didn't really help either. Uh, I think we did this in kind of a stupid way. We really wanted to run it. We should have known it was gonna be crazy, but we ferried across the river so we could scout the drop and the drop above this. And now we're kind of committed. So we can't really get back over to the other side. And uh, if we want to portage this, it's like a never ending portage, like on the edge of a mountain, or you have to go up and over the mountain which is what we would have to do that because it's just on along too steep of an incline and it would probably take at least two or three hours um, because we had to walk so far down to scout this because it's in a tight slot canyon. So that's uh, putting the pressure us on it to run it because uh, if we were to portage, we might not be getting home in time today. So probably a bad decision to cross the river like we did in a spot where we can't really get back. Uh, so Ted's a little stressed out. We literally took us an hour almost to walk down the slot canyon to scout this thing, which is just crazy. But uh, I think I'm gonna run it. Ted doesn't know, so I might run it. Uh, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna run it. Ted's not sure. So I might run it and then walk back and uh, help Ted haul his stuff through the bush on no trail. But that's kind of the only choice right now. What's going on here is there's a huge drop like this and it goes into a rooster tailing wave with irregular currents, almost a hole, followed by some really boiling aerated standing waves. Then not long after that, there's another huge wave where if you hit it on the left, you're gonna dump and if you hit it on the right, you're gonna dump. Then after that, there's a pretty smooth wave, but another curling wave pushing to the left, followed by a gigantic hole. And if you don't dump on those and you don't have too much water, you could probably make it the rest of the way down. I mean, the whole rapid has got to be definitely a class three plus. And, uh, you know, the, the hard, the trickiest part is that there's a, a freaking hole that crosses the whole river um, right in your way, which is super challenging. So I'm going to put my camera down, while we're back up river, and hopefully you, you see me coming down here cheering or coming down here with my boat out upside down but still alive. So we got a massive rapid here that's frankly scaring the shit out of me. All kinds of unavoidable huge standing waves, irregular standing waves, holes, uh, side currents, boils, you name it. And it's a long stretch with the sketchiest feature right at the top, arguably the sketchiest. And uh, you know, if you go down there, it's just kind of a scary swim. From up here, because I'm about 30 feet up, it doesn't look that huge, but once you get down to river level, you're like, holy shit. So. Probably gonna dump, um, but it does look pretty big volume, so shouldn't shouldn't uh, that should subside the risk of any injuries, hopefully. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be wild. I'm probably gonna end up hitting that hole, whether I'm floating at the time or swimming at the time. I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully not swimming, but that hole does look like it's gonna dump. Um, and swamp you. It is pushing through enough 
it might keep you there for a minute or well not a minute a few seconds but it's kind of a concern uh, so there's a lot of absolutely massive stuff that could dump you right before that so it's kind of concerning is the big kahuna. Should I run it with you, behind you? If you want, sure. Here we go, baby. Crazy ass rapid coming up. Just ran the base of $30 Rapid and it was raging. Um, I was first saw it, I'm like, I'm gonna do it. Then I was like, I'm not gonna do it. Then I was like, I'm gonna do it. And then back and forth. And uh, then we ran this little class three at the top. Ran it nice, felt good. I've shifted my bag a little further in the canoe, uh, a little further forward this time in the canoe compared to yesterday, so it's handling a lot better. Um, I had too much weight in the back, and so it was just like, you know, oil canning left and right too easily. So it's it's feeling better. Now I can back paddle and have control without it spinning as much. So I was just like, I'm gonna do it. So I just ran it, just right after gym, just huge. I just, pretty disappointing because my GoPro was pretty low lying, and you can't really see the size of it. Um, but there's some other freaking awesome footage and 
yeah, it was just uh, wild. And so, you know, this whole soloing thing that I said I was nervous about, uh, I'm not really anymore. It's, uh, you know, definitely would have been a harder run tandem, I'd say that one for sure. Uh, probably the border of what you could run tandem, uh, unless you were in like a bagged out whitewater boat. You know, maybe with a spray jack, maybe me and Jim could have ran it in, in this boat. But, uh, but yeah, so soloing, you know, whatever. It's fine. That was awesome. So that's a good example of the power of this river. Um, you know, there's been a lot, but I kind of like this one. There's a boat, someone's like aluminum lund, tin boat, just smashed and flattened like a tin can, stomping on a can. It's, uh, that's pretty nuts, you know, to be able to do that, especially the front where it's like reinforced to just flatten it out. So pretty crazy. Get through on the far left, come around. It, I think it is going to push you left, you know, but even if you do go far left, you can just go through it. I think. Especially when you're racing for, to, uh, at night, against the night, you know, like if it was 10, we were like 10 minutes later, we were like, I think like, you know, what we did was fine. Well, that was the last rapid of the trip. It's kind of sad, to be honest with you, to be finishing so much uh, of everything. A little bit of fishing, a little bit of strenuous work, portaging, horrible bugs, battling, and uh, some crazy rapids, and a successful uh, solo trip for me. Well, solo as in paddling my own boat. I didn't do the trip alone, but soloing my canoe, other than just a little bit here and there, paddling the odd rapid. I've always paddled uh, stern or tandem, 
and uh, so I was a little unsure of how things were. I found that it was overall it was easier. I could run bigger stuff, um, less possibility for communication errors, of course. Um, but some of the things that I'm still working on is just uh, the way I read rapids and scout them. You know, if you scout them as if you're with two people with more gear, uh, they, you know, it's actually a little different when you're when you're soloing. So, um, you know, some things basically that would give you trouble don't when you're soloing, and a few other things that uh, you know might be advantages when you're tandem paddling uh, that you don't have when you're soloing. So, anyway, regardless, uh, just whipped out here didn't dump anyway it was a success hey Tori hey how's it going babe pretty good is the restaurant open no I don't think so oh. I think there's a restaurant at St. Almet just down the, the bay here Yeah. Well, we're back. Tori was here, perfect timing. Awesome trip all around. We had fish, beautiful campsites, beautiful weather. Even when we got the rain, it's still just nice, kind of a break from the heat. Um, successful solo trip. You know, it's uh, I think it's easier than tandeming is what everyone says and it's true. And, um, you know, just uh, great all around. And it was fun to do with Jim and the buckaroo. Buck, yeah. Buck did an awesome job out there, just running around the rapids. Uh, all in all, it was awesome. Good times. How's the boot doing? It's beautiful here.